Yellowstone Caldera, Big Quake, magnitude 5.0, downgraded to 4.4 by USGS. Others still have it at 4.9. Plus the Earthquake Swarm, again at the same exact area, 3.4. And this is around the area of Yellowstone Supervolcano. The day after, USGS came out saying that there was a gravity, th uh, uh, a gravity proof that the magma chamber is building up. And a day later, we have the magnitude 5 and the swarm of 10 within the hour. Let's take a look at that, shall we? Something very important to look at. We had a 4.7 on the Juan de Fuca plate, and a few hours later, about seven hours later, we had another one about uh, 200 miles south of 3.1, plus the fact that we had a, a quake swarm in this area right here uh, of uh, a number of quakes, which is very unusual. So we have to keep a look at for that, what's hap something's happening there. You can see there, right south of Vancouver Island. And now, going to Yellowstone. This is where what happened yesterday. This is the earthquake area. It's about 80 miles uh, northwest of Yellowstone Lake. And uh, let's go back to the, this is it right here. This is where we had the quake swarm, the 5.0 that was downgraded to 4.4. You know, about 35 years ago or so, they had a 4.5 quake there, and they called that huge, and they were worried. So you can imagine, now that we have a 5, they downgraded it to 4.4 in order to sort of downplay the event. I would venture to say that they should come out in a week or so with the new Caldera Chronicles to explain what that was. Because this here, the 5.0, downgraded to a magnitude 4.4. By the way, they had also 10, 10 quakes. Uh, 10 right here, if we open that up. 10 aftershocks right on top of it. There it is. Uh, and then we had the other one that that was the 3.4. And this one is the late, these two are the latest today, 2.6. And if we go in more, we'll see that's hopping. Uh, they've had a number of blue, the yellow ones are the past week. week. Um, the blue are the same day. And the red is uh, within the hour. So this is the same area, 2.6, same exact area, and another 2.6. And uh, this was a 4.9, see they didn't downgrade it. This is a 3.5, and uh, it's still hopping. These are the ones that are recorded, re uh, reported. The recorded, of course, are a lot more. Uh, so something very strange is happening there. And we did see, okay, that's the, um, where's the lake? Somewhere here. It should be around here. Let's go out more. Okay, there's a lake right there. And it's about, from what I measured, it's about, sorry, it's about, uh, Let's go. 70, not even 80 miles. That area is not even 80 miles. And let's remember it's a super volcano. And that area has been hopping continuously, obviously. And uh, going back now to Sizewell, Berkeley. That's not it. It's right here. That's it. You can see that the whole area is hopping, all of Montana, all the way down to Utah. This whole area 
of course, is uh, the continuation of the fault lines having to do with the supervolcano, right here. Now this area, of course, Salt and Buttes, California is hopping as well. And we had a report lately by the USGS expecting at least, at least six major earthquakes on the West Coast in California. So uh, we'll keep an eye on what's happening on Yellowstone. It's strange because this, this happened the day after USGS came out with the announcement in the Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles that they have measured from their gravity meters, their gravimeters, that there is an increase in the gravity of the supervolcano, meaning that there's a magma buildup. When there's a magma buildup, that means that things are not good. That means that uh, the buildup means that there's something happening. And that's why perhaps we saw the new thermal area that they spoke of uh, just west of Yellowstone Lake. The new thermal area west of Yellowstone Lake somewhere around here, if I remember correctly, this, uh, just past this thing, right around here. And they have not yet stepped on that area because it's difficult to get to it because of the snow and uh, the inclement conditions there, obviously. They have another uh, bomb snowstorm cyclone coming in this, this week. So uh, they'll, at some point when all this uh, extreme weather is over, They'll walk there and see what exactly is taking place. Is there, is there a new geyser activity? Is there a new spring activity there? Uh, we see subsidence in the caldera, they say, but in Norris Geyser Basin, we have the Steamboat Geyser has arisen. It has arisen. And plus, they have this new thermal area, which means that they saw it from the dead trees, and they also um, found it by thermal imaging, and they have to go and observe it uh, with a hands-on experience whenever they can get there to tell us what exactly is there. So uh, the strange thing is that after the gravimeter announcement we had this huge 5.0 and we still have the big one 3. Point, uh, where is it? 3.6, 3.4 and we're having continual quakes there. Yeah, I don't know, I'm worried about this. Uh, it's good, of course, that the pressure is being released uh, with these quakes. All these things here are quakes, as you can see. Uh, now something is happening as here as well. This is not a this is not a good sign. Four point seven. Again, uh, pressure is released. This is the Juan de Fuca plate on the Cascadia subduction zone, and um, this is, of course, one of the most dangerous places in in the world to have. Uh, a mega quake of 7.5 magnitude and above. So I'll leave links below for you for this on Seismal Berkeley. And of course, you can always check your Google. I've got things pinned here so that I can very easily find them. Okay, so that's as we said about not even 80 kilometers from the new uh, seismic area with quake swarms continuing. And the Long Valley is about from Yellowstone. Center to Long Valley is about 600 miles from what we know. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue 
my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.